we doubled our speed in megahertz, which of course gave us an effective bandwidth that was also double. Uh, I say effective bandwidth, that's not really uh, technically the best way to say that. I should probably say our theoretical bandwidth. Because all these bandwidths that you see here, that's not a guarantee that if you're transferring data through some kind of a card, for example, that you're always going to get the maximum that you see here. It might be contending for attention from the processor, or it might be waiting for a process, or for a certain set of instructions to complete. Uh, so you're not always going to get this whole thing, but this gives you the maximum theoretical bandwidth. Your actual bandwidth or throughput might be a little bit different depending on what your computer is trying to do. Uh, and then we get into further iterations, and I'm not going to explain all of these because you can they pretty well explain themselves. It's kind of like that old joke where the guy gets up in a meeting and he says, these numbers are self-explanatory, so let me explain them to you. Well, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Uh, however, you can get the idea of how all these work. Notice that we did get an implementation of PCI that went to 64 bits. So now we used to have a 32-lane highway up in here. Now we've gone to 64 bits and 33 megahertz. Guess what, though? That equals the same speed as the 66 megahertz PCI. But look what happens here. If I go into 64-bit and 66 megahertz, then we start getting faster and then we get into higher and higher implementations. Now I want to pause right here at PCI X and also PCI Express. Uh, we'll talk more about PCI Express a little while later on. I'm going to skip down to the, to the end a little bit closer to the end here first, but PCI X and PCI Express should not be confused. Some people think that PCI X here is just an abbreviation for PCI Express. That's not the case at all. They're totally different. The form factor is different. The cards are different that you plug into the, the slots, so they're entirely different. PCI X is just yet the next generation of all these versions of PCI that have come along, and PCI X is the current implementation, and it's probably going to be the last except for minor variations because we're going to move into PCI Express probably in years to come for PCI technologies. Uh, and actually, I might as well just address a couple of things right here right away. So let's go ahead and address what we've got down here. Let's say we're at our highest level of PCI right now, which is 533 megahertz. Wow, that's going to give you a blistering 4,266 megabytes per second bandwidth. Or another way to state that would be to say 4.2 gigahertz of bandwidth. Or if you wanted to round it, I guess you could say 4.3. But what we have going on here now is that we've got a 64 lane highway, so to speak. That eventually causes electrical problems and uh, problems for electrical engineers that design these motherboards and design these standards. Think of it this way. Let's say after work today, you uh, send out a broadcast email to all 64 co-workers in your area and you say, everybody meet at Applebee's for happy hour at exactly 5.30 and 10 seconds. Well, if you did that and everyone absolutely had to be through the front door at that time, people would be trampling over each other and the cops would come, there'd be an ambulance and all that because it would be a mass riot, everyone cramming through that door at the same time. Well, you see, this is all parallel technology. What happens in the technology here is that the data all has to arrive at exactly the same moment from one end to the next of this connection. Well, that's very difficult to time and to synchronize in terms of the electrical engineering of this. So when we got to the 533 megahertz speed at 64 uh, bit widths here, it just got to be pretty much the limit of what electrical engineers were capable of doing with their current technology. So we moved into something else called PCI Express. Well, now to carry through with our happy hour at Applebee's uh, implementation, here we have PCI Express 1.0, and there's one single lane of data. But look how screaming fast it is, 2,500 megahertz. So what that says is instead of every, all the employees arriving, all 64 employees arriving at one time through the front door at Applebee's, they can go in single file line, but guess what? They blast through the door really, really fast and scare all the waiters and waitresses. <laughs> so that's going to happen now is that PCI Express is a serial technology instead of parallel like PCIX and these other implementations. It's serial, meaning that one chunk of data can follow in single file line right after the other, but at extremely high megahertz. And if you do the calculations here, we wind up with uh, 250 megabytes per second. And you can see the first implementation of PCI Express is substantially faster than the first implementation of PCI. But you also take a look at this and say, well, why would I want to back down to 250 megabytes per second? Hey, we used to have 4.2 gigahertz. 
Why would I want to back down to this? Well, uh, first of all, PCI Express, it's going to wind up being cheaper because it's easier to design electrically, requires less implementation on electrical engineers' part, development times will be faster, so uh, economically speaking, it could be better. And the PCI Express standard gives us the expandability you can see down here. We, can, we don't have to stay with one lane here. We can go into 16, which we would say PCI Express by 16 or X16, and PCI by 32. And you can see that we're increasing in speed dramatically as we go there. While I'm here, let me also go back to our calculations. Remember we saw this earlier, this little formula where we take the megahertz times the bytes and we wind up with our bandwidth. Well, how's that going to work here? Because I got one. You don't, that's not really anything that's divisible by eight. But really it is. If we take our calculator out, let me move this around a little bit, and we take one divided by eight, that's going to give us 0.125. So that's what I'll multiply by. So it's going to be 0 0.125 times 2,500 times, and it's going to only process 0 0.8 um, d d data cycles per clock cycle, so that'll be 0 0.8, and that's going to equal our bandwidth here of 250 megabytes. Also, while we're looking at this, you might be kind of getting intimidated by this chart and saying, great, Scott, you're going to have to memorize all of this for the A-plus exam? <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> you, you, might, you might not have to actually totally memorize all the numbers exactly, but what I would be prepared to do is to be able to answer a question like this. And I, I'm not saying I'm giving away answers from the exam. I'm just saying that this is the kind of information that you should know. And that would be if a, a question were to come up saying, which is faster, PCI Express by 16 or PCI 66 megahertz 64 bit? Well, we would see here that this has a bandwidth of 533 and this one has a bandwidth of 4000. So if you kind of get pretty familiar with this chart and you, you take a look at it, you can probably do pretty well without having to memorize it, every exact number, but just come very familiar with it so I at least know which one of these is faster than the other, probably be okay. Now I'm also, by the way, I'm going to show you the slots for all of these things and some various kinds of expansion cards that would fit into these various slots so that we can uh, kind of put a visual representation of all of this instead of just seeing a bunch of numbers, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, then we go into video. Video ag accelerated graphics port, or AGP. Initial version was 32 bits wide, 66 megahertz, one data function per clock cycle, and that gave us a total bandwidth of 266 megabytes per second. Uh, that didn't last very long. This is years ago, again, that we had AGP in this version. Uh, later on, they were able to do two data cycles per clock cycle, so it was able to double, effectively, double the, the bandwidth there. Uh, but most AGP cards that we'll see in, the, in recent years are going to be more like AGP 4X or even AGP 8X. And here we can get a total bandwidth of 2,133 megabytes per second under AGP 8X. And that's going to be pretty good for high-end gaming machines or Photoshop or producing movies on, on your computer and things like that. Uh, there's another one that's not listed here, but it's even better than that, and that would be AGP Pro. I don't really list it because it's not much of a, uh, of a desktop PC kind of a function, but you will see it on perhaps high-end servers and workstations, and it's mostly for professional use, as the name implies, for people to do high-end AutoCAD and need to have uh, extremely fast redraw capabilities and things like that. And those AGP Pro uh, video adapters are extremely high power. They can go up to 120, uh, excuse me, 110 watts, and they even have to have a separate power connection besides the power they get from the slot. Some of them will have a Molex adapter where you'll plug in directly from the power supply in the computer into a connector on that card. Now then to skip back up here, AGP 8X, again, uh, because of some uh, electrical limitations and design limitations, we're pretty well maxed out at AGP 8X. It's because of timing and other issues. That's pretty much as far as we're going to be able to go. So what the designers have done is, again, is they've gone back up here to PCI Express. By the way, PCI is Peripheral Components Interface. And what we're using now is mostly video cards on newer motherboards that are by 16, and they're fitting inside of that slot. Notice that the bandwidth is effectively double uh, what we could have gotten with AGP 8X, and so we're going to get much, much higher performance out of PCI Express by 16 than we ever could have gotten out of AGP 8X. And to make that even, uh, even better, you can...